Good afternoon, dear listeners. How are you today? We're back here with our healing hands and healing energy. And today I thought that we are going to talk about different healing positions for Reiki or in fact for any kind of healing that you choose to have. Even if you haven't learned how to use Reiki, you can still use your hands and practice with your hands and see how the healing energy can go through the person that you're trying to help or through your client and see how they can benefit from your hands. So I will go through the basic healing positions for Reiki, um, the most basic ones. There are more positions that if you want to learn, you know, you can go deeper into it. And I will also use a little bit of a personal touch of what I found in my healing, what really helps, you know, which areas to, to touch, to, to work on. And essentially, uh, when you work with your hands, you mainly need to listen to your hands. That's the lesson number one. So your main teacher in healing is your own hand. Your own hand knows exactly where to go and where to be magnetized. You just need to follow your inner guidance, you know, follow your inner vibration. So when you start working with a person, you can intuitively feel where the body needs most help. You know, sometimes they teach even scanning the body with your hand. This is what we go through in our energy healing classes. But even sometimes looking at the person's body, you can tell where there is maybe a little tension, maybe there is a blockage. Sometimes you can just feel that, oh, the back is heavy or there is something in the belly, like you can feel that there is stress there. So knowing that and then using your hands intuitively can help to release that blockage, can help the person to cleanse internally. And one important thing to know is that we are healers, all of us we are healers, but also we are facilitators for the healing of the other person. So essentially when we do energy healing we're helping the other person to realize their potential, to realize how it is to be healthy, to remind the person of the healthy state. So it is in fact self-healing. We're just assisting the person to reach their self-healing at that moment. It is nice to remember that because this way we're empowering the other person to heal. We're not taking the full, you know, that we are doing it. We are giving the person the chance to realize their own potential to heal. And I think this is powerful. Okay, so uh, it is nice when you do healing to have a good access to the person's body. So maybe they could be sitting on a chair, uh, maybe laying in bed. Uh, or maybe being on a massage table. So today I'm going to show you the massage table version Which is the easiest to be honest because you have full access and you can really touch different Aspects of the person's body and also it is quite easy on your back Because you can take a seat, you know, you have the right height You can adjust the height, but you if you haven't got the massage table uh, you can use the chair or armchair or whatever position you find whatever you can get hold of at that moment. So uh, for those of you who practice Reiki, you know that first of all we invoke the energy of Reiki to come uh, and you may practice it in your own way. Different teachers teach it in a different way. If you have not learned Reiki, uh, you can still access the healing energy of your hands by placing your hands together and taking a nice deep breath. and asking for the healing energy to come into your hands and to help the person in the best possible way. So you wait till the energy starts to run through your hands and you really believe it. You really trust your abilities. You just know it's there. You don't need proof. You don't need a sign. It's there. The moment that you connect with your energy, it is there. Just know it and just believe your inner power. So throughout the healing session today and throughout your own practice, always listen to your own inner voice. You can't go wrong if you listen to your inner voice. And sometimes your inner voice may tell you something unusual or strange. I do it. You know, maybe you want to move your hand, maybe you want to make a sound, maybe you want to breathe deeper. Do whatever comes to you. There is no rule here. There is no book that will tell you exactly what to do. You've got to follow your inner guidance. That's the most powerful one. 
okay so today we're going to give healing to the lovely Oksana who has kindly agreed to help us today to do that okay so she's going to relax and have a good time so you can close your eyes Oksana and take a couple of nice deep breaths and not worry about anything in the world just go into your own personal healing space wherever you like have a little dream of your own maybe a nice nature place maybe a forest or a meadow or just a place full of light wherever you like to go or you may just rest and think of nothing all is well so sometimes I give a little bit of a suggestion before the session so the person can have a choice what they want to do and they don't have to do anything they don't have to try you know work on it uh, they can just relax it is very nice to give uh, people a chance to relax because we haven't got much of these chances uh, nowadays so when somebody tells you oh you don't have to do anything just relax people take it as a very positive thing and they then feel like they can allow themselves to relax so remember that okay so first of all we work with the head with this area very powerful area the head imagine that all person's thoughts are located in the head area so if the person is suffering from you know a lot of thinking maybe heavy thinking or negative thinking it's all accumulated in the head area so sometimes people experience migraines you know or heaviness or stress in the head it all has to do with what's happening metaphysically inside of our head what we're thinking about so if you like you can give a little energy cleanse to start with sometimes i do that i do it very intuitively this is part of uh, the energy creation technique that you can learn how to work with the hand motions there's a lot of different interesting hand motions that you can apply for the person's body okay so you got the energy in your hands and usually we start with a very basic main position it's almost like a flower like petals of the flower it just reminds me of that you know like a tulip and you hold it on the top of the person's head like this And you just give give this energy it's a very good idea to breathe deeply when you give Reiki or energy healing because it helps the energy to flow better when you breathe yourself your energy feels more free and it travels better in your body so remember the breath So remember the love for the person when you're treating them feel how much you love them even if you haven't met them before you can always imagine love and love is the highest healing vibration if we think of somebody with love if we project that feeling to somebody uh, they really receive it and then your healing multiplies at that moment even a look of love can multiply the healing so I'm just going to do a short version, but in reality, of course, it takes longer. There are more positions and you spend longer time with every position. Okay, so then we usually work with the sides of the head. So you can place your hands on the sides. Um, sometimes you can touch the person, sometimes it's better not. You can ask the person in advance if they're okay to be touched or you can decide like common sense yourself for example there are areas that you don't want to touch not to make the person feel uncomfortable and ears or sides of the head are one of those you can hold your hands just next to the head the energy will travel equally it doesn't matter whether you touch or you don't touch the energy travels in space so feel free to use the distance that is good for you i really love this position between holding your hands uh, to both sides of the head holding the head between your hands it's almost like you're holding a ball of light in your hands and you really have full access so one hand is shining the energy to 
the right ear, the other hand is shining the energy to the left ear, and you can imagine the energy coming together like that and continuing the effect. It's really beautiful and really empowering if you think about it at that moment. Sometimes I may imagine that I help the person to disperse their thoughts. So, you know, sometimes you have business people coming to you, people with very stressful lives, and you really feel like you want to help and release their thoughts for them, you know, at least release the stress from their lives. So sometimes I will project that calming energy, a very soothing energy into their head, and imagine that the heaviness subsides. I just visualize it or I feel it kind of interacting with the energy and imagining that it is calming down, it's calming down. All right, I'm going to show you one more a position which I find very useful. It's essentially not even from Reiki, but uh, I came to practice it myself when I opened my intuition more and I started feeling energy. So uh, touching the forehead, very powerful. It is the third eye, it is all the energy there and the vision of the person is very sensitive, it's a very tender part of the person's body, so be, be very gentle, be very careful, very loving, so I always make sure if I touch the person I do it in the most gentle way possible, <laughs> because the person when they're relaxed they do feel much more in that state than when they are in everyday life. So I very gently touch the forehead and I just connect and I imagine that I stabilize the energy in the head, align it, make it very balanced, very truthful, connecting the person to their truth inside of their own head and letting go of unnecessary energy whatever is not helping them or maybe they need to let go and just giving a lot of clarity to the person a lot of clarity almost like you're giving that flow through the third eye that like a shower of light but very gentle and powerful at the same time so it's you want to try and maneuver the energy and manage the energy in a way that the person uh, you know may not even be aware what you're doing how much work you're putting it into it they feel very comfortable at the same time you know you are accessing and you know you're touching the important points okay so this is some positions to work uh, with the head of course there is much more that you can learn uh, so for example in energy creation courses we learn how to use hands uh, for the face, how to use hand motions, how to release a stuck energy, how to cleanse energy. There are lots of little magic tricks uh, that you can use. But this is the basis that you can try and work on with yourself or your friends uh, to clear the energy and balance the energy. Yes, so within. now we're moving to the side of the body. So we worked with the head. We've done all the important movements of energy. We've fulfill the energy into the body so it's now charged once you worked with the energy in a certain part of the body it continues to work and you may notice that people that you work with may say oh have you been touching my feet and my stomach at the same time and you say no because you've touched the belly for example and then you moved on but the energy of the hand is still there it's completely normal because the energy is alive it travels it stays in the air after we worked with it so uh, that's actually quite a beautiful uh, sign that the energy is alive and it's true. So we've left the energy now working at the top part of the body, you know, whatever you've decided to work on here. And we're moving to the side and here we have a lot of potential to work with. We have uh, the solar plexus area, the stomach, the heart area, the chest, the sacral chakra. So whatever you feel that you need to work on, you can work on here. And again, you can begin by calming the energy down. Almost like you're interacting with the sea. And you know that the sea is calm and relaxed. 
very soothing energy. Sometimes I imagine the energy of the sea on the person and I feel that it helps to balance their frequency. Okay, again, this is part of energy creation, some of the healing motions that we can work uh, with the person. Let's say we want to work with the heart and with the chest area, so we can place just our hand above. Some people have a power hand, so some people feel that one hand is more powerful than the other. It doesn't have to be the case, but uh, I alternate my hands, but I know that my right hand uh, I work a lot with, so sometimes if I want to really give a strong flow of energy, I'll put it above and I will channel the light from my hand into the heart of this beautiful person. And it's really important to listen to your intuition, you know, whatever your hands tell you at this moment. So I'll give you an example now, like I feel when I touch the heart of Oksana, I feel like I want to spread the line from the heart into the sacral area. I want to connect them. I want to make them feel good together. I want to make them friends. I want to balance them. So my subconscious just gave me information that I need to bring the energy together. I listened to it and I did it based on my intuition. So that's how you can work with it, with the first sensation, the first willingness or yearning to do something, that will be right. And I feel like placing one of my hands above the sacral chakra, so you see I'm balancing the two organs at the same time. Almost like I'm spreading the energy, it goes like this, like swings from the heart into the sacral and backwards, balancing. So if there is a lack of balance somewhere, let's say the energy is too strong in one part, I will ask the other part to balance it so we can equally disturb, distribute sorry, the amount of energy from one to the other. Like scales, weights. I find that no one session is like the other session, it's always a bit different and depending of course on the person's energy, depending on you, depending on what the energy needs now and I'm gonna combine them again now because I just feel like that I just feel that they want to merge together and I'm gonna do it very gently so I want the person to feel really good, that's my aim to make the person feel very good today I want them to feel different, renewed. So in a way I'm placing that intention in the energy of that person. Okay, now we're going to go to, to the belly. Okay, let's see what we want to create here. And aha, uh -huh. my energy tells me that I want to create an energy ball here. Again, I'm showing you parts of energy creation now beautiful beautiful technique where you allow your hands to create new energy in the person's body or in a space so I'm gonna create a very beautiful ball of light like a dome of light actually above the belly and I'm gonna ask this energy to keep practicing this light there keep working on the belly so I'm gonna program it to stay there that's something you can do not just work in the moment but you you allow the energy to go through into the future. You know, you program the energy to work today, tomorrow, the day after tomorrow, as much as you like. And also, I'm kind of visualizing that this energy is going to the whole body as well, not just the area I work with, but everywhere. The really good thing about energy creation is that you can move your hands as well when you're giving healing, and that creates a flow that creates energy communication, so you can really feel how the energy is transforming in that way. And also you feel quite creative, you feel that you're listening to your inner guidance at that moment. Really beautiful. Okay, 
renewed energy in the belly, in the chest. Wonderful. Keep smiling. It's a happy moment. It's a happy healing frequency. It's good to be doing this work. It's really nice. Really nice to help. So and to be helped. Now we are moving to the area of the feet. A very important area, not to be dismissed, because as you know from our feet, the energy flows into the whole body. When we connect to Mother Earth, the energy of the Earth is flowing and lifting up through our whole body, cleansing our chakras, our energy points, so we really connect with the energy of the ground. And also when people do massage or reflexology, there are so many different points on the feet that connect to different parts of our body. So we can essentially do beautiful healing to the body just from the feet. So when you work with energy healing, uh, always do the feet as well, you know, in the way that's good for you, that's comfortable, do at least something and really notice and become aware how beautifully the energy spreads from the feet to the whole body. It's like a shower. It's like a beautiful waterfall. You are touching the feet and you're observing how the energy goes through the whole body. And you, you can even imagine that shower. You can even imagine a flow of water. Because essentially why uh, illness happens in the body? Because of trapped energy, contracted energy, you know, when there is not enough flow, when there's been a stress and it hasn't been released, or maybe a pain of, or an emotion of some sort from the old days. So when we allow the body to relax and we allow the body to let go, then the true healing starts to happen. And this is one of the benefits of us as energy healers. We help the person to relax and to be themselves, to be their higher aspect of themselves, you know, the peaceful one, the knowledgeable one, the you know, very centered one. So it's almost like you're taking a drawing of the person, of the perfect state, and you are replacing the current state with that drawing. Uh, it's like, you know, you create this perfect uh, portrait of the person, the way they should be when they're healed. And you're placing it, you know, you're not removing anything from them, but you're placing this new vision, you're sliding it in. So then it combines with the current moment, with the current state of things, and then blends into one. So the person lifts to another level. So that's something you can imagine. All right. So sometimes if during the healing session you want to charge your hands again, you know, and remember the, the energy of Reiki or any other healing energy that you would like to work on. Bring it back to your hands. It's important to be centered yourself when you're giving the healing, of course, because it helps you to focus on the person's body. Okay, so then we're working with the feet. So many things we can do here, many different positions, but mainly I would say you can touch the toes. Take them like that. and spread the energy through the feet. Like you direct your breath in and out, the same way you direct the energy from your hands into the person's body. As I said, if you haven't learned any energy healing or Reiki, you can still do it. The energy of love counts. The energy of goodness and kindness really works. So if you feel you've got special energy, just do it. You know, if you love a person, maybe it's your friend, your boyfriend, girlfriend, maybe a parent or a child, and you want to help them, use your hands. They will love it. 
and it will bring such a beautiful connection between you two. It really works. So you spend some time there. As I said, today I'm showing a short version, just like a taster. Really, there are many more positions and it's done in a longer way and you fully engrossed into this process. You're fully there when you're giving an energy healing. And things come to you along the way. You realize what you need to do along the way. Another thing I like to do is sometimes touch with your fingertips. You can touch the middle of the soul. And it's a very beautiful thing to do because I can feel that the whole power of the person is laying there. You know, like, like pathways of energy, like chi energy starts from those soul chakras. So when you touch it very gently with a positive intention, with love, you stabilize them, you cleanse. It's like a tap, a tap of water. If there's been a blockage or something, you just need to pour more water so it flushes that out. So what we're doing, we're stabilizing, harmonizing and flushing at the same time. And the more you work with energy, the more you know what you're doing. You're really in tune. By the way, you don't have to know. Sometimes you just follow the inner guidance and do it. But with time you will get more awareness. Ah, you will know, okay, now I can feel there is a bit of, for example, tension or discord, like some energy is, is not connected or it's a bit fallen apart. So in a way, by touching it and directing your pure, very stabilized energy, you're bringing the energy in the person's body together. So that's what I'm seeing now, for example. I feel the energy is a bit dispersed. I want it to be together, connected. So it go back, can go back to healing, to balance. So that's what I'm doing, just with my intention, with my imagination. Okay, and of course you can just touch the feet like that, on the top. At that point I really like looking at the person and imagining that the energy is flowing from my hands through the whole body. I can literally see with my inner eye channels of light going through the person and almost coming out at the crown chakra. Like it's a very pleasant flow of light. You don't have to imagine things. I like imagining things. I have a big imagination. But if you don't wish to, if you just want to focus on peace, that's perfect. You do it in a way that you like to do it. Part of energy creation is when we imagine things and we place different spheres and forms and colors, shapes and even the whole sceneries into the person's body to make them feel better. So for those of you who would like to go with your imagination and really develop inner trust, you can learn that. And notice that when you give energy healing, you're actually healing yourself as well. You are greatly uplifting your own energy. Because imagine that this energy is flowing through your body before it reaches the person. So you are essentially getting healed as well. It's a beneficial process for both of you. You and the person who is receiving at that time. Okay. So I'm just going to add a little bit of personal touch. So I'm going to seal the energy in a way and make it very balanced with some energy creation motions So essentially, I've opened the energy of the feet a little bit towards the good flow in life, towards the betterment of all life aspects, towards good experiences in life. So I feel like I would like to give to this person a good journey in life, you know, a good path. So the feet feel 
strong and courageous to walk the path of life and also they have a lot of light attached to them so wherever this person steps they will have a lot of light on their journey so yes to be honest there is so much in this world this is just a little taster i wanted to show you there is much more whether you want to do conventional reiki healing or you want to practice energy creation it's a beautiful world that you can learn and you know it it never finishes you create the whole encyclopedia of energy inside of you inside of your hands inside of your heart and then you're reading your own book because you have written that book before and you have done it before and you've been here before or maybe on other planets you have done healing before especially if you feel it especially if it's goose bumpy you know you just know it's there it is there you've done it so when you do it you are just remembering just remembering so you can allow yourself to remember you can give yourself this gift and you don't have to worry about anything you know follow any particular rules from outside all the information is inside of you so uh, just remember that power inside of you and enjoy giving the energy enjoy improving the energy flow inside of you and the other person this is the best gift we can ever give it's bigger than all the physical gifts that we give to each other if we really give great energy to the world to ourselves to each other we blossom like flowers we become healers and we already are the truth is we already are you know we are just remembering we're repeating it's coming to us again so with that mindset it becomes even easier to trust your own skills so thank you very much for listening and uh, if you like please come to energy creation courses i really welcome you uh, my students and we can practice together and find new things and i'm sure each one of you will bring their own goodness and their own talents to the course and we can learn from each other as well because the energy will be our teacher we will talk to the energy connect to the energy and ask the energy how it can help us and this is the most truthful direct information from the higher realms and uh, it's all very loving and positive and free thank you very much lots of love have a good day thank you i feel uh, lightness in in my joints in my head uh, i feel flowing of energy uh, like a buzzing through my hands, from my legs, from my belly, my, in, from my head. It's, it's amazing energy. Mm. Feels so good <laughs> and uh, much more clear thinking. I even see some images of uh, new paintings. Mm. Yes, yes, yes. It's a lot of space uh, freed in my head now. Oh, that's good because you are you do art, don't you? Yes, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Do you think energy work uh, helps you with the art that you make? Oh, definitely, most definitely, it does, it does. And uh, this is uh, uh, this energy work uh, remind me of other ancient energy works as well. They all uh, based on similar principles. It's amazing how they linked all of it. Mm. Mm -hmm. and, and I love it. It's very nice. How would you describe the energy that you felt? Like, does it have any particular sensation about it or frequency? Did you yeah, pick up? Yeah, yeah. I felt uh, like a little, like a pin and needles, like a buzzing going through through uh, my body and and releasing, like it's click, 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 releasing little tension and and uh, like uh, some stress moments probably leave all this uh, like tension, like muscle tension even mm -hmm. and it's, it's releasing during the healing mm -hmm. process mm -hmm. uh, okay. and this is amazing and it lasts, it lasts with me for a while as well oh. I wish it lasts longer <laughs> yeah. Yeah. and do you have any advice for like people who want to improve their creativity or you know maybe for young artists or people who want to do something creative, maybe they haven't started yet, what would you recommend as an artist? As an artist? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, on my personal experience, I found that uh, the preparation, emotional preparation is most important. And uh, 
they, it includes uh, relaxation and leave uh, everyday tasks behind, not let them crowd your head before you start your creative work. You really need to give yourself 20 minutes, half an hour of uh, uh, settle yourself down, let feel who you are and how you are in this moment and really relax and maybe even do some stretches, like a free stretches in any direction mm -hmm. and, uh, and uh, feel that you have a hair, you have head, you have these arms that will create some beautiful things mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and this way you get ready mm -hmm. and then you will be amazed what what you will do after. <laughs> wow, great advice. I'm gonna start touching my head right now. <laughs> yes, yeah. And create something beautiful. Thank you so much, Oksana. Thank you for helping us today and being so beamy and shiny. Thank you oh, so I'm much. I'm so glad. Okay. I'm so glad to be part of this project. <laughs> Thank yeah. you.